Hello everybody, this is Jeff. Today's topic is lens selection for portraits. I'll be using four lenses during the video. A 35mm wide angle, a 50mm normal lens, a 90mm macro, which is pretty close to an 85mm, which is typically used for portraits, and a 135mm, sort of longer telephoto. The lenses shown actually don't match those focal lengths, they're a bit shorter. And the reason being is that these lenses are designed for a camera with a smaller sensor than that which matches a 35 millimeter film frame. So to keep the nomenclature the same, I'm gonna talk about the focal lengths today in 35 millimeter film equivalents. So that if you're using a full frame camera or a micro four thirds camera or an ASPC sized camera, or even a film camera with 35 millimeter film, everything will be kind of the same and you can figure out which lens to use. I'll have a blog post that's uh, connected with this where you can figure out what focal lengths you need to match the focal lengths I'm talking about today for your particular camera. And helping me during this video is Tara, who will be modeling in all the photos you see today. We'll cover three points today. One, that if you have a prime lens, it's going to be better probably for a portrait than a kit lens will be. The second point is use a wide aperture and get fairly close to your subject. And that will give you a shallow depth of field, which will blur the background and give separation between the person you're taking a picture of and a confusing background, if that's what you have. And the third point is choose the focal length that's going to give you the desired look. If you have a kit lens that came with your camera, you, let's say you just bought a Nikon or a Canon digital SLR entry level or a little bit higher, it probably came with something like an 18 to 55 millimeter 3.5 to 5.6 lens. If you have a Michael Four Thirds camera, the focal length is going to be a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same angle of view focal length range. If you set that lens to be what's equivalent to about a 50 millimeter angle of view or focal length on a full frame camera, which is what I used for both of the photos you're looking at right now. The aperture is going to be fairly close to 5.6. It's a variable aperture lens. It's what enables the camera manufacturers to sell a kit lens that's inexpensive and small and light but there are certain trade-offs and one of those is that the aperture is going to be variable. It's not going to be a constant. And at 5.6, or close to 5.6, you don't get a whole lot of separation between a subject and a background. There's not a very shallow depth of field. So the photo on the left is taken with a lens set at 5.6. The photo on the right is taken with the very same lens, same camera setting, same everything else, except I've set the aperture to f2. And you can see that there's a difference in the background. That wider aperture gives you that blurred background, that shallow depth of field. That's the only difference between these two photos. So if you have a kit lens and your backgrounds are not as blurred as you were expecting, or you're using your kit lens for portraits and they don't look how other portraits look like that you've seen on the web or you've seen friends take, maybe the difference is they were using a prime lens. So if you want to do a lot of portraiture, you might want to look at prime lenses and I'll cover using four prime lenses later in this video so you can see how they look and how they render the body relative to where you're standing because that's basically what a, the different focal length is going to do. The closer you are to the subject relative to the background means background is going to be more blurred even if you're using just your average lens. In this case I'm using um, my prime lens at the 50 millimeter equivalent it's at f2 for both of these so it's giving me this nice blurred background on the left and she's farther away from the wall than she was in the previous photos on the right even though she's probably a good five to seven feet away from that wall the fact that i'm farther away means pretty much everything's in focus she's in focus the wall behind her is in focus so the closer you are to somebody it's going to make the background more blurred in your portraits. So now we've talked about aperture, we've talked about distance. 
the last topic is what focal length do you want to use? You've got several to choose from. So here's four photos where, depending on the lens, I've had to move closer or get farther away because I want her torso pretty much from waist up or from about chest up to fill the frame. On the left is a wide angle lens. It's a pretty moderate wide angle lens. You can go much wider, but 35 millimeters is probably as wide as most people go for portraiture. And even so, when you use a wide angle lens, whatever is closest to the camera, closest to the lens, is going to appear larger than everything else in the photo. And since I'm photographing pretty much at her head height, it makes her head look larger than her torso compared to the other images. That's what a wide angle lens is going to do. It may not be the look you want, or it may be the look you want. So you would pick a wide angle lens if you like that type of effect. The next picture to the right is a 50 millimeter lens. It's called a normal focal length. This is kind of how humans experience the world. We have kind of an angle of view of 50 millimeters. So this is sort of a typical image to us because it's kind of how we see things. It's a good focal length to use for portraits. However, if you go a little bit longer in focal length, it tends to compress distance and it makes people look a little more flattering. So the 90 millimeters, which is the next photo to the right, is close to an 85 millimeter focal length. And that's typically what a lot of people use for a, a portrait or a short portrait. However, you can buy some macro lenses that have a 90 millimeter focal length, and that's what I used in this case. An 85 millimeter telephoto and a 90 millimeter macro are pretty close in focal length, so I tend to choose the macro because an 85 millimeter lens has a minimum focusing distance of roughly three feet, sometimes a little bit less, but it's usually around three feet, which means you can't get closer than that to the subject. And if I want to do just a photo of somebody's face or maybe head and shoulders, I need to get closer than that minimum focusing distance. So I'll use a macro lens. The picture on the very right is a longer telephoto. It's about as long as people might want to go. It's 135 millimeters, and it really compresses distance. So the 135 millimeter versus the 85 millimeter is a choice of working distance, basically. With 135 millimeters, since it's a longer focal length, you're going to have to back up farther from the subject than you would an 85 millimeter but some people like the look of 135 millimeters, so that's what they choose. For my preference, I, I like how this lens renders, and I'll use it if I have the space. Otherwise, I'll use the macro. So those are the typical choices. You can buy zoom lenses that match this. However, zoom lenses, especially if it's a consumer-grade zoom, they won't let you go for wide apertures, whereas these primes will. For every one of these photos, I've used an aperture in f2, except for the 90 millimeter macro, because it won't go down to f2. I think I shot it at either 2.4 or 2.8, but everything else is f2. So it's a nice wide aperture. I'm getting blurred backgrounds relatively. I'll also have a blog post associated with this video where you can read about the lens choices that you have for your different camera formats, such as Micro Four Thirds, ASPC size sensors, and full frame cameras. So, hopefully, this gives you an, uh, an idea of what your options are. And if you had been using your kit lens for portraits and they just weren't coming out how you expected, maybe it's time to get a prime lens and try that out.